Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks. I'm here today to talk about engine diapers. Now, this is going to be kind of a product video and also a Motion 360 all at the same time, so bear with me. Uh, it's become a really hot topic lately about engine diapers on uh, all of these new cars, and for a few reasons. Number one, a lot of tracks are mandating engine diapers on any car that's faster than 1099 or 999 faster. Uh, a lot of NHRA events are requiring it and just other sanctioning bodies in general. So the reason why they're mandating it is simply because they're trying to keep the track surface clean. On a race weekend when they have a packed house, the last thing people want to do is see a car oil down the track, take two hours to clean up uh, just because somebody didn't have an engine diaper on their car. Also because of safety. So as the rise of the SBE or the stock bottom end engine and all these turbo and LS and coyotes become more popular, it seems like people are kind of getting a little less careful about safety. It's really easy to go eight, seven seconds without having to worry about safety equipment because you just get there so quick. So in the past, a lot of guys were conscious because it took them a number of years to get there. Now you can build a new car for relatively inexpensive uh, amount of money, which kind of makes you forget safety for some reason. It's just too easy, too quick, so you just kind of get complacent. Anyways, that's one of the reasons why these engine diapers have become so popular and become required. And a lot of these sanctioning bodies are requiring them, but I'm here to tell you they do their job. Uh, the amount of people that have called us and thanked us because this kept their project, their car safe, their investment safe is just awesome for us. It's a cool feeling to ha get called on Monday and have somebody say, man, I really appreciate you pushing engine diapers. I thought you were just trying to sell me on it, but my engine knocked out the side of the block this weekend, six quarts of oil ended up in the diaper, kept it off my tires. I was able to slow down and pull to the side and safely park the car. And so they were able to race another day and their 20, 50, $100,000 investment is still there minus the engine of course. So we developed an uh, engine diaper for the LS1, which just so happens to work on the small block Chevy and small block Ford. And then we also have a diaper for the Coyotes and the Mod Motors. So when I started thinking about engine diapers a number of years ago, I started thinking we just need something that fits better because it's not really that much fun to try and run one of these things and it not fit and it burn up and not you know get into stuff and all that type of stuff. It just becomes a pain in the butt when it doesn't fit well and it doesn't really work that well. So we designed from scratch our own line of engine diapers and we tried to make standard what a lot of people charged extra for. So for the LS1 we have an engine diaper that fits very well with the F-body pan as well as the Holly series of pans, the Moroso pans. Uh, it comes with or without motor mounts and we made it so that you can install if the engines of the car with motor mounts You can install this diaper on it same with the coyote uh, We have one for a stock coyote pan that also works with a stock mod motor pan And then we also have one with a moroso style pan for a coyote that also works with a moroso Mod motor pan so we'll dive into this a little bit deeper the main goal of a diaper is to contain as much as possible uh, of an engine explosion, uh, failure, a leak, any of that type of stuff. And why we like the engine diaper over the uh, pan, or the belly pan as it's called, is that it wraps up the side of the engine. So what it does is it uh, catches as much as possible. Whereas a pan sits down below and it just catches what drips. And why we prefer the engine diaper in any platform where it can actually fit is if you blow the side of this block out, there's a large chance that a lot of this oil makes it past the pan because it's either gonna go backwards with the wind or it's gonna go past the pan. So there's not a whole lot of rules that govern a pan. And while a pan catches a lot of debris and a lot of oil, it's certainly not gonna catch everything. It's just not, you know, a diaper. So, um, of course there's builds and projects and platforms where you can't fit a diaper on, but we try to put a diaper on whenever possible. So our diaper uses Kevlar side straps standard. So we don't charge extra for that. And why that's important is because all of these straps, whether it's on an NA car or a turbo car, are gonna get close to a heat source, a header. And not only for strength, but for heat resistance, Kevlar is gonna hold up better than anything that is out there. We originally uh, tested around with some nylon and they just melted about 50% of the time and that doesn't do you a whole lot of good if this side strap melts. So we went ahead and made them out of Kevlar. That way, to the fullest extent, you don't have to worry about your straps melting. Now, 
if this header gets to be 2000 degrees and that strap touches it, all bets are off. So what we did on ours is we left extra length so that um, you can either bolt it off of a header bolt or you can bolt it off of an accessory or head bolt. So what that does, it gives you a lot of leeway as far as where you're mounting it. If I mounted with this particular header off of this header bolt, uh, this strap would be all up in this header. Now this is fine right here, this type of distance right here. The, if it was touching, that's not fine. So we get calls about that, like I melted it. I'm like, man, if you melted Kevlar, there's not a whole lot I can do. You have to put it somewhere where it's not physically touching and it's gonna hold up pretty darn good. So if you look at this LS diaper, it fits really great to an F-body pan. Now I've had customers put it on what is called the muscle car pan, the truck pans, uh, even the C6 pans without the kickouts, and uh, it works really well also. You'll see it's got uh, these side lateral straps on the side of the diaper. So what this does is the biggest issue with an LS, and now this is a Moroso pan that's on here right now, so it fits really well. So a Moroso pan is sheet metal, so it stops right here. Uh, on an LS1, the flex plate is so close to the back of the engine block that if you run a stock cast pan, it ends right here. So the issue we were having was this coming unbunched and getting into the flex plate. So to the best of our ability, we put these straps right here to basically pull the fabric tight so that if you're running a cast pan, you can hold it as tight as possible to the back of the pan to keep it out of the flex plate. Now, if you don't pay attention or if the straps loosen up, there's not a whole lot we can do, but it does a really good job of keeping away from the flex plate. Now, this isn't anything that we can really design around because all of the brands are gonna have run into the same issue. Uh, ours probably has the best option because it actually pulls it tight back there where others leave it loose. So if you're running a stock pan, it's important that you get this smooth, tight, and very um, snug to the back of the pan and fitting so that it doesn't get in the back of the flex plate. Now, one of the reasons why we suggest people run a Moroso oil pan with any aftermarket build is that it gives that extra room down there in, in addition to the better uh, oil control and movement on G-forces, which is the main reason why people run. Now, you'll see here on the side, this one actually has the motor mount cutout style. So, this strap right here is a quick release. So, if you just feed this up around the engine with the motor mounts installed, you can actually just uh, install it, hook this back around the top of the motor mount, and you don't have to pull the engine out to uh, put the diaper on with motor mounts in the car. So that's kind of a cool option. We also have a motor plate style that's solid right here, so that if you don't have uh, motor mounts, it just seals that up that much better. Now, this diaper is NHRA and IHRA approved, so what that means is if you're a sportsman racer up to 749, you don't have to have an SFI diaper. Anything past that, you have to have an SFI diaper. So for the general crowd of us, we don't have to have it to be SFI approved. This has to be NHRA, IHRA approved, which this is. Um, this thing is designed above and beyond what a normal diaper has with a Kevlar strapping and all of that. So it's a really cool piece. Saves a lot of money not being SFI approved and uh, NHRA and IHRA stand behind it. Now, one of the things that we did on this because the biggest concern uh, people have is what if I need a maintenance um, or change the oil? So we put these quick release straps. Now I just, uh, you'll see this quick release strap. So all you have to do is that. You push this button and it pulls out. So on the side where the oil filter is, you can literally pull the diaper off and leave this portion on the car and drop the whole diaper in a matter of minutes. So the hardest thing is just refeeding these through, which isn't that difficult. That way you don't have to unbolt the entire diaper every time you want to take the diaper off. Now inside the diaper is a absorbable pad. So basically the whole purpose of that is to um, absorb any liquids and trying to keep them from sloshing around. So if you have a small leak, you can go ahead and just replace that absorbable pad if it wasn't just a wicked, wicked engine uh, explosion that takes out the diaper and everything or shreds the inside of the diaper. Now this diaper is actually designed to go behind the starter. So it's not me meant to go out and around the outside of the starter. So that'll actually cause some clearance issues if you try to run it the, the long way. 
it's actually going to make it short on this side, which will cause fitment issues. The other thing is I get a lot of questions about our uh, turbo drain lines. So if you're draining your turbo lines and you're draining them right into the pan, people ask me all the time, like, do I cut a hole in the side? Do I sew a hole in the side? So here's my answer to that. This I designed this on purpose for this reason. If your turbo oil drain line is right here, which it always is in the front or at the top, I always suggest that you bring the line in and put it right here and then put the diaper over it and tighten it over it. There's a side flap here for a reason. We leave it loose for a reason. And the reason why we do that is if this line for some reason starts to loosen up and starts to leak, we want to contain it in the diaper. Also, if it melts off or something crazy happens, why not try and contain it in a diaper? So I don't see any reason why you would ever want to cut a hole in the side, basically getting rid of the integrity of what you're trying to accomplish as far as holding liquids inside. So I always recommend either running the line from the back to the front or the front to the back, depending on where your turbos are at, and running it that way. That way it's all contained and we contain as much as we possibly can inside of the diaper. So now that we've addressed some of the other concerns that go along with an engine diaper, the last question I always get is how much heat does this retain? I drive mine on the street, I don't want it to overheat, I don't want it to heat up the oil. So I had a hard time believing this, but a couple of customers have told me, and Nathan Shaw, a friend of ours from Open Minnesota, did a back-to-back -back test. So he took his car, his Nova, out on a hot day without the diaper, measured water temp and oil temp, and then went home put the diaper on, made the same cruise, no noticeable difference. So there's no noticeable heat trapping, thermal issues, anything that go along with the diaper, which actually surprised me. But that right there kind of gives you a little bit of a reassurance that, you know, whether you have a street car or a race car, you really don't have an excuse. So with the rise of popularity of these SBE engines where you have uh, internal parts that are just ready to give way at just about any time, or you have a built engine. I've had a number of customers lose built engines. This is a $300 investment. It's a quality piece that we designed. It fits really well. It functions really well. And it's possibly going to save your ten dollars to $100,000 project and let you race another day if you grenade an engine. So consider looking at one of these, whether you buy mine or somebody else's. I think it's a great investment to put an engine diaper on any project, whether it's a 10-second car or a 7-second car. So... Thanks for tuning in. This is another episode of Motion 360. I hope this helped. We'll talk to you soon.